Hi everyone, it's Tanya Gibbs and today I am going to be doing a layout from start to finish. I'm going to be using products from Marion Smith Designs as well as Petaloo. Uh, these papers are from the Never Grow Up collection and the Petaloo flowers are just gorgeous. They are uh, the Springberry collection, the Botanical collection as well as the Hydrangeas. So. Um, I will put a link to the blog post down below. We're having a blog hop with the design team from both companies and uh, it, it's going on from March 24th through the 28th. So to start the process I have some glitter nail polish that I'm going to color the egg in the photograph and then I'm going to take my Copic markers in RV55 and RV9 and color in the egg just to give it a little depth and dimension and some color. It really, adding the glitter to the egg really makes it pop and as you can see here it's super sparkly and then I'm also going to show you a before and after so you can see how it was dull and pink before. Now I'm going to use the Zutter uh, corrugated cardboard and that is going to be the backdrop for my layout. Now one thing you need to know is that these boards are 13 inches by 13 inches so I did have to trim an inch off of each side in order for my papers to fit. So what I typically do is uh, go ahead and rip it apart and then I cut because then you'll have an idea of the grid. Uh, this paper does or this corrugated paper does rip very well if you cut away from from the lines not with the lines. Now I'm adding some Liquitex Gesso surface prep over the top of this. This is going to give it just a little bit of tooth so that when I add my color in the next round it doesn't soak immediately into the chipboard and uh, it gives it a nice shabby chic kind of look. So again, I'm covering both sides. I didn't bother with uh, peeling back the cardboard in the center because I'm going to add paper there and that gives it more stability. Now I'm adding some blue to that. The color blue that I used was from Folk Art and it was 2556 medium blue and I'm using some gesso to just tone it down. It was just a little too dark uh, and then I'm just going to paint that right over the gesso. I'm missing some spots so there'll be some white, there'll be some blue and I think this is really what adds that shabby chic look to things. And again I'm not being super careful with it. I just want to get a little hint of color here and there. This blue is really going to bring out the blue in my niece's dress from the photograph. So I grab my Distress Crackle paint from Ranger and I'm adding it to my canvas with a popsicle stick. I'm being very generous in it and leaving it very thick in some areas and thinner in others. The thicker that you leave this medium, the bigger the cracks will be. Uh, and, and when you do a small amount, it has a very hairline crack cracks in it. So you want to make sure that you leave it thick enough to crackle. Uh, here is the end result of what it looks like. I did let this sit overnight uh, for it to cure on its own and then I'm taking the Heidi Swap Pink Archival Ink in my finger and I'm working that down into the cracks of the canvas or of the crackle and then I'm going to come back with a baby wipe and wipe off the stuff that's on the top before it has a chance to dry. The archival ink from Heidi Swap stays very wet for a period of time so you have time to play with it. But once it dries it is archival safe. So once again I'm just repeating those steps in the bottom section. Now I'm going to add some Liquitex matte medium to that center section so that I can add my paper and I got a little carried away with the amount of matte medium that I put onto my board but that's okay because the chipboard does soak that matte medium in and it's it just gives it a really nice layer uh, for my paper so it doesn't peel up later on. So I'm going to press it in really well, get it very smooth and work all of those uh, you know just work all the air bubbles out and then I'm going to rip out across the bottom where the corrugation is. Once again I did not put matte medium across the corrugated areas yet. Uh, I think that's the thing I'm going to do next. So I'm going to peel that paper back so that it gives it a little dimension and depth and it also provides a ledge for my flowers. And now I'm going to grab my doily and start applying those to the 
uh, around the edges of the ridge they're going to give like a little lacy banner type feel to this area and soften it up just a little bit it was a little too harsh of a transition between the paper and the corrugated cardstock by using the matte medium I'm able to uh, control where the adhesive is placed and I want wanted to leave those doilies elevated a little around the edges these doilies are from the Marion Smith collection they're they're just absolutely gorgeous and very thin so they're perfect for your mixed media projects and again just I pulled the photograph out to figure out placement of these doilies I, I really don't want to cover up areas where they're going to be hidden behind the photograph but I do want them framing around the photograph I think that the doilies add just a little bit of softness and femininity to this layout and um, I'm not sure if I showed it on camera or not but I did finally go over the corrugated area with matte medium to seal it because this canvas will be hanging on my wall and I wanted to um, make sure that it was sealed so that I didn't have to worry about weather damage or humidity or anything like that so the matte medium does offer a great sealant and once again, just fussing with these little doilies and sticking them across the bottom, uh, tucking them in at the ledge. I cut them because instead of putting them down first, I, I didn't want to waste the um, doilies because by cutting them, you can use, you know, you can make your stash go a little further. So now it's time to fuss with my picture. And I added the ATG just a little too premature. Uh, after I added it, I decided I'd, the edges of the photograph were just a little too clean. So I took some of the gesso that was on my brush and just kind of worked it around the edges of the frame of the photograph just a little bit to distress it up. And I've propped my photograph up on some 3D foam dots. And now I'm going to show you guys. These are the Botanical Blooms in Lavender and Purple and the velvet hydrangeas and cream and then the next one up is the spring berry cluster in pink and these clusters are made to be pulled apart and used separate so I went through and I decided that I needed to add a few more doilies across the bottom uh, of my shelf here uh, and that's just going to give a nice base to ground my flowers uh, before I start building out my flower my flower clusters and I love that the lavender pops off of the pink background I think sometimes when you have um, you know a have a heavy dominant color in a background it helps to add a contrasting color to that and the lavenders really are going to help to pop those sprays up and give them a little depth so I have one more doily to fuss and tick tuck in here the pop dots that I used on the back of the f of the photograph were from Martha Stewart and they're very uh, tall thick uh, foam so the photograph really is elevated quite a bit so now it's uh, time to start building out my clusters for my flowers and I have a lot of people ask me about my mindset whenever I start doing these things I always start with my largest flower first and if you notice I'm building small cluster first and then I'm going to move on to another section of the page I try to work in thirds so I'm flanking both sides of my photograph first and then you'll see me move on to the bottom uh, I try to duplicate with my first cluster what I did uh, maybe changing up the side that I'm doing things with uh, but for the most part it's the exact same floral spray just moved to our floral cluster and I just move it to another corner I'm trying really hard not to let colors of the same flowers of the same color touch each other because I think that's when you start seeing more contrast when they don't um, and if I do a leaf on one side I'm trying to add that same leaf to the other side opposite the leaf and these berry clusters are so beautiful they just add that little pop of jewel tone to the clusters now I, I'm fussing with this uh, burlap bow and I lay it there but I don't actually leave it there these flowers are called the velvet hydrangeas and fuchsia 
and I love these because they remind me of the azaleas that are blooming in my yard right now so uh, I'm going to scatter these around those uh, little clusters and they're going to help to pull the pink from below up but notice that my dominant flower is actually the lavender so that uh, it actually has a little more weight than the pink and it sends the pink back to the background with with the paper so now if you notice here comes my triangle my visual triangle I'm building out the cluster at the bottom uh, the the hydrangea that I put down the first time did not have a pearl in the center of it so I added another on top that did have the pearl and I nestled it into that little cut uh, in the paper I'm going to end up eventually moving it around but we'll talk about that when I do it uh, and also I'm using hot glue on these flowers for one reason uh, if you use a permanent wet glue then you can't move them around if I decide I want to move something around I can hit it with my heat gun and move it now I'm showing you the junk and gems from Marion Smith designs I'm going to use some of the resin pieces from the flowers and uh, use those to kind of add a little more interest to my spray I've also added the bird with the nest and the little eggs from the Junkin Gems as well as the butterfly and the butterfly is made with a really thin metal so his wings can be elevated and twisted to give it a little more depth and I've decided to put one of the small cabochon roses in the center from the resin and I decided on the white because the pink was just too much with the other pink flower there then I decided that he needed a little something to sit on so I I added a, a small leaf from the flowers now again just building out those sprays I'm just looking all around to see I've added metal on the right side it's now time to add it to the left if I'm gonna tuck it in I don't wanna waste it so I've cut it in half and I am uh, adding it just tucking it in right behind that white rose because I felt like the white flower was just blending into the doily too much and the other half of it I put down at the bottom with the pink hydrangea again it builds out that visual triangle with the metal where I'm going from you know the two sides of the photograph and then down to the bottom so now it's time to just keep adding more flowers adding more flowers these flowers were so beautiful I just couldn't stop uh, adding them I just wanted the whole page to be filled up with flowers uh, it, uh, again just needed a little depth between the doily and the flowers so I'm adding a leaf there I think it's very important when you build your floral sprays to remember to add leaves because the leaves are what make your floral sprays look more natural uh, they do help to ground your flowers a little and give them a little depth and again just tucking in more of those little berries here and there more hydrangeas I know you're gonna get tired of me saying this over and over again now I've decided I need a little more purple so I've reached for the botanical minis in lavender again these are from Petaloo and I've tucked them on either side of the pink at the bottom and again I'm just gonna continue to build out across that ledge up at the top I did not like the transition between the paper and the corrugated board so I was just trying to hide it a little bit now you see me fussing with another one of the cabochons from the junk and gem collection I was gonna do the pink but it was too small then I added the white but I didn't like the white next to the white flower but it did fill the space a little better so I just settled on it I didn't have a medium sized pink one left and of course what I do to one side I always try to add to the other side and I've decided to take another piece of that metal filigree from the Junk and Gems collection and cut it in half and tuck it in on either side and there's my floral spray for the time being I think I was pretty happy with it then I went to some of the packaging or the branding strip on the paper and decided to use the never grow up it, my thought process was that this was going to be the title of my layout so when I tucked it here at the bottom it fits really well there but I decided as a title it really didn't show up there um, I abandoned this idea later down the road but in the meantime I decided to do it uh, down at the bottom and then uh, I'm adding some of the Ranger antique linen 
just to soften that up some it was just a little too stark white down in that bottom cluster my eye was going straight to it and I really wanted my eye to settle more at the photograph than the small title at the bottom now laying it down I realize uh, you've got the white flower next to the white tag so this is where I decide to pop it up on a pop dot add a little bit more color to the edges try and make it work and decided to rip that pink hydrangea up and put the white one at the bottom and then nestle the pink one up by the banner and I do like that a lot better now I have a hole underneath my title and in my mind I just can't figure out what to do with it so when something like that happens I just move on and and eventually something comes to me now I need a spot for journaling on this layout and I don't typically like a lot of journaling on my layouts but I think it's important to tell the story so I've added a, ta a small luggage tag and now I just need to fill in the gap under the luggage tag so I've gone back to Marion's uh, Junk and Gems and looked for another piece of metal and I've also cut away uh, the branding strip off of another sheet of paper um, and it said remember this so that title is going to end up in that cluster up at the top so there's my journaling and yes there's a missing word on here so I end up um, fixing it at the end so don't don't scrutinize it too much right now uh, I had this little satin bow on my desk from another project and didn't use it and unfortunately it still isn't getting used but that's the little piece of ribbon that's left on the spool at the very end so it worked nicely on that tag just tying a simple bow there the other was just a little too bulky and now I've decided let's make this even more feminine let's drape some pearls in here uh, so uh, I just used some really thin iridescent clear pearls to go around the edges of that cluster and it just kind of I think it makes it look like a tea party it's just so cool looking so anyway now I'm adding some more of those little berries just to kind of finish up the package tucking them in all over the place I'm trimming off the bottom of the stems just so that they're um, you know the stems aren't too long it makes it easier to tuck them in and now I have found the placement for one of those bows I've decided to nestle it right there I didn't want it on the right because it competed with the bow that was on the tag and I love how it its natural hemp flavor or <laughs> flavor listen to me color so um, it just blends in really well there now I'm taking an old paper shapers uh, egg punch that I have had since I started scrapbooking and I'm gonna take the RV09 and just duplicate what I did with the egg in the photograph the uh, glitter paper that you see there is from Cosmo Cricut uh, and I love it because it doesn't shed so it, it makes it really nice and I had bought it in silver figuring that I could color it with my Copic colors to make it whatever color I wanted to match my projects and I just love it now because I wasn't sure how the glitter would do on my Copic markers I didn't want to ruin my brush nib so I'm using the flat chisel side of the marker since I never use that now you're gonna see me start placing them into my clusters they are not in your face they do not stand out it's something you really have to look for but I think that's really what Easter eggs are all about so uh, I just hit them into the floral sprays here and there you can see them if you look hard enough but I um, I really think that that just kind of brings that Easter element into these now I've just taken these are some wooden chip pieces that were cut from a wooden laser cut that I got in a dollar bin and I, I just put some gesso on them and left them sort of natural and I'm gonna take this Martha Stewart punch and punch out a few butterflies I couldn't decide if I wanted to use the rose side and leave them subtle or use the B side of that paper and I ended up thinking that you know they were just a little too close to that pattern paper so I used the B side and nestled them down there in that bottom cluster I told you it was bothering me that there was you know the the never grow up was just sort of sitting there and I think that's important to note whenever you are building out your clusters is pay attention to gravity pay attention to depth and uh, you know you don't want things just free floating at the top you, you they need to be weighted down uh, I see that a lot and it and I really think it helps your eye to digest 
what's going on whenever it's anchored to something. Then I went into my deep hoard vault stash and I found these uh, alpha stickers from my mind's eye and they actually matched her dress really well and so I abandoned my idea of the packaging being my title and instead I've used the negative space on the photograph to add my title and uh, I started out just doing egg hunt and then at the bottom of the alpha uh, stickers there was the word family so it's family egg hunt which is exactly what it was we we get together every year at Easter and have an egg hunt and then now you're gonna see me adding some pearls or excuse me I'm adding the year down at the bottom since these were last year's Easter's photos um, and it, it just kinda helps to give a date reference that this was you know happened in 2013 now I'm going to add some of the pearls to the center of my butterflies it's a very subtle touch but to me I think these little subtle details are really where the art comes from and if I'm going to hang this on my wall especially I want a lot of detail so uh, the, I can piddle with a layout for hours and days and days and just keep coming back and adding more details like this but um I just think these these little subtle details are what make the layout so now I think I'm gonna be finished with this uh, thank you so much for watching uh, here's some close-up photographs of the final layout again don't forget the blog hops happening uh, it will be going through until the 28th so make sure you get in for some fabulous prizes I'll put a link down below in the description and on my correlating blog post I will have a list of all of the supplies used in creating this layout thanks for watching and thank you for your sweet comments